I'm on. I'm always on. Turned on. I didn't even have my Constantly. headphones on. I'm just What's turned on all the time. What is your problem? <laughs> hey, are we uh, are we the big three? Big three, like we started the league. Oh, please don't. Oh do uh, no, please no, no, do no, no, no. <laughs> no. But I know Jakey's a rap fan. Did you uh, what you think about the song, the verse that came out this week from Kendrick? Do you listen, dude? I'm gonna are be you honest. Into all that? No, I didn't really, really listen to the album yet. But like, I mean, Drake's the king of Canada. So like you see it all over like Instagram was, and stuff. I thought it was Justin Bieber. No, I mean Jay Beebs <laughs> is up there, but he's like, Bro, he's not Drake had, though. He he got like a club in the Raptors arena. He's got, dude. He's I got everything. Know, the dude. embassy. Yeah. Like he's got everything. Roby, he up there in Canada. He is, I feel dude. like Jakey's the king of Canada, but like you know. Drake is up there. Drake can kind of compete. Yeah. When I'm in Canada, yeah. Like when I'm in when I'm in the six, people when know. You're back, yeah. they check when he's in, in the six. When he's in the yeah. six. When he's in the six. They check fire. in with me. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Was fire. But we are the big three. Feels good. Like we started a league. Yeah. Like we started a league. Right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? It's just something like. <laughs> Damn. Great. Uh, no, that was fire though. I mean, Kendrick went off. He I gotta went listen off, to though. it. He man, he was I'm not going to lie, I've been like, that song has been on repeat for me. And I'm a huge Drake fan, but that's, that song has been on repeat for me. That shit got me in my bag right now. I'm not even going to lie to you. Dude, Kendrick's like that dark horse of like hip-hop where like you kind of forget who Kendrick is. And then he comes out in whatever, a feature, a song. And then you're like, okay, that's the why world Kendrick's stops. a goat. Yeah. The world stops. It's like fun again. You got Nav unfollowing Drake and stuff. It's cool. <laughs> Nav unfollowed it. Drake. I know, dude. The fucking the T. The T. We thought we thought Web three had T. <laughs> and then he and then and then Drake captioned a picture of one of Nav's lyrics. It yeah, he did. Hilarious. I seen that. I seen that hilarious. one. Hilarious. Do you think the when, little pettiness in rappers is funny as fuck? Do you I think when it. we talk about their drama, they talk about Web three drama? They're like, damn, did you hear what happened with Blast the other day? <laughs> Sixty two million dollars <laughs> rug slurf ten million the, the week before that. You think Drake's talking about that with fuck his voice? No. I, I, <laughs> we, I mean, I would like to. I would like to hope so. That'd be great. You know what? You know what? I, Honestly, I, it wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me. Like. Speci- I don't know why specifically for Drake it wouldn't surprise me, but then if we're talking about like Kendrick Lamar, like that man doesn't even carry a phone like no. for for months at a time. Kendrick's so, like, never heard of Web three. Kendrick is is not talking about Web three drama. No, that's what I mean. All. He's not like an internet kid. He you know, just pops up when he Drake needs though. To. Drake, I could see being like one of his someone on his camp is over here like yo, fucking put into slurf pre sale. Dude, 10 milli burned. That's 100% true because do you guys remember uh, Anita Max win? Yeah. And you had uh, the stake intern because like Drake's tied in with stake and they had the stake intern. Bro, they'd and, be doing it in slick ways. And he was replying back, like trying to pump that token. See? Hey. There's something there. Do you, something Okay, there. so real quick, do you guys think. And then they put out the merch? Yeah, yeah, Bro. the hats, yeah. Bro. Do you think if Drake saw the, uh, you know, this week we had the Solana Girls video and we had the uh, Cardano Girls video, do you think if Drake saw those, which would he be a bigger fan of? Hmm. I don't want to do this one. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. Uh, I'm here for all the women in Web3 that Look are at here. That. Look at and that. And so, you know, if you're on <laughs> Cardano, if Politically. you're on Solana, if you're on ETH, if you're on AVAX, if you're on fucking base blast we love all of you i had no idea there were people over on cardano i'm gonna keep it a buck Nah, they had to have been hired i'm sorry hey, don't, don't. <laughs> they had to have been dude don't. sunny, why, sunny why gave we, the correct yeah answer, why we gotta play on. why we gotta play cardano like it's just it always it always bro i me. seen i seen a girl she fucking uh had a power tool in her hand and she was like <laughs> of course we sell our husband's power tools for cardano and then fucking like made the drill sound and i was like yo that was kind of fire that's, that's kind of fire sunny dm'd her <laughs> yeah <Hell. laughs> things don't work with him <laughs> no no oh, oh my god th- no those videos are funny though and it's always like I- honestly it was good to see both of them going like Crazy, crazy viral. So I don't want a little bit crazy, but I, it was good to see them going crazy. Yeah, it's people take them so serious. Like Bro. that's the that's the part that was funny to me is like the video gets. I mean, I, I don't know what Bex is up to. Let's let's just assume a million views. It's like those videos legitimately piss off people, which is which is 
shocking to me. Like, I don't really understand how you can watch that and truly be angry. Is it like, shocking to you? Honestly, truly. In no, the, in, okay, no. In the no, state no, okay. of where we're at in the I world, mean, I've seen people get mad about fucking the most random shit on the internet and actually let it affect them personally. And, like, it's weird. I mean, a, a video's not viral if people aren't, like, talking negative about it like there's there's like it has to at least be 50 50 if not that 80 20 you know people that don't like it and then there's that 20 that do so like it does not surprise me but i will say like the numbers compared to like you know you've been doing the podcast forever we've all been doing content you know throughout the bear market whatever i will say like you can see the difference between then and now in terms of just numbers and like statistics like those numbers like bet getting a million views like Hell no, that wouldn't have happened like three months ago. So like, Bro. it's kind of cool. And then you got banks doing the vlogs and stuff. So I don't know. It's we're in a cool spot right now. I think we should get into that. We actually, are, what, yeah, what, we are in a real cool spot for content. It is. What do you guys think about banks coming in with the red guy, leap all the boys, and uh, and pumping out the fire content? Dude, I think people forget who Banks is. And yeah. like, I'm not gonna like suck dick on the podcast or anything, hey, but yo, like, pause. it's not it, that kind of podcast. There you go. <laughs> There's a time and place Mark for wishes it was though. <laughs> Dude, if we could be naked right now, that'd be like a dream come true. That, uh, bro, the amount of clips we could grab from that, dude, me and you sitting on the couch naked, that's insane. What about you're just leaving Sonny out of that? I wouldn't be. Yeah, naked. but he's over there Jakey alone, knows. so it like yeah. feels a little. Jakey knows. Sonny just be walking. And, and speaking <laughs> yeah. of, because I love Jakey, he's sitting in that seat today. You know Is this your spot? Usually, it oh, but actually, honestly, quite truly. I love this seat. This might be my new permanent. No, it can't be. Why it's, not? It's too uncomfortable for me to sit like this for this long, but I'm doing it because we're, we're doing the Yeah, bath. but like we don't care about your comfort. Okay. All right. Is I'm this d- where the guests, like when you do your own pot, this is where they sit, right? Yeah. If I have a third person, they almost almost always sit over there, but. Damn, Sonny. Yeah, there's a, there's a separate show between Mark's podcast and D Weekly. I would just like to point that out for anybody that doesn't know now. That there's, Two separate shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are two separate shows. That's all I'm saying. You Sonny, don't. Sonny doesn't like when he doesn't get tagged in D Weekly. It really, uh, it really grinds his listen, gears. Listen, listen. Hey, you gotta do it. Dude. I put the, I put the, shit, I put the work in shit. for this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I put the work in for this shit. I, I would like to be tagged. <laughs> I don't blame I would you, like dude. To be tagged. You gotta do it. That was such a. I would like, that was so genuine. I would like to be tagged. That's fair. I would like you to be tagged too. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's all good. But <laughs> anyways, all right. So, so let's get saying? back into it. So probably nothing. Banks, everything they're doing over there. Mm-hmm. What were your guys' initial thoughts? Like again, I, I think you're right on that, Jakey. I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten like who Banks is, everything he's accomplished with Faze and everything like that. And then to me, just you know, seeing him come in, but then also you know he's and he's been in Solana for a long time now. Like he's yeah. been a part of it. He's been buying into different things, stuff like that. But seeing him bring in the Solana OGs, bringing in people like Frank, bringing in people like Thread Guy Leap, all these different people, like that was cool to see because to me it's like where he has a gigantic audience that really doesn't know that much about Web3, but now all of a sudden they're starting to learn about it. They're seeing people like Steiny from now in those videos and stuff like that, which I think brings more eyes and attention to everything that's happening over here. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's a you know net positive for the ecosystem. And uh, whether, whether it's your content style or not, like whatever, I think it's dope. I think it's awesome for the, for the whole space. Yeah, I mean, I like, that, I like that he's tapping in with like the culture. It, to the sense of like, yeah, Thread Guy is a huge person in this space and has been a huge person in the space for a very long time. Obviously, Frank, obviously, Leap with the spaces um, and even a couple of the other people that he's just been rolling with. Um, I think it's just important that, you know, the fact that he's doing that, like he didn't try and go and just like make CTV himself and like put it out and like try and get all the crypto Twitter to like come behind him because he's banks or something like that. Right. Like he's actually tapping in with the people that have spent literally every day here for who knows how long, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that goes a long way. And even like, I don't know him personally, but like seeing in ETH Denver, like he was on the ground, like at these various events, like he came to the, he came to the cube event with, uh, with Frank and TG. And that was, it wasn't a party event. It was a low key, like cool vibe, like kind of top golf indoor vibes. And it was just like, you're making connections. And I think that's the important part. Yeah. It felt cool. And it feels like organic too. And like, like I said, I want to say like that 2016, 2017 era of YouTube, like it was banks, dude. It was like banks, rice gum and all the people in the cloud house. So, like, exactly what you guys said, to see someone that has had the success that they have in Web2 video content, whatever you want to call it, 
tapping into Web3 and doing it on a proper scale, like being with Red Guy and Leaf. Like, I'm not sure if they live together, but it feels organic in the vlogs. And so I just think it's cool. And that's just the style of content in general that we need. Because when I think yeah. about the space in general, one of my biggest gripes with it when I first got in is I'm like, dude, we're in this little echo chamber that never tries to breach into any other group of people. And so it's just literally our little group talking to each other. And that's basically it. But if we really want to make this space something that really grows, really becomes something, then it has to be something where, A, the people that are in it are looked at as more than just like crypto people in general and stuff like that. And there's got to be some sort of like culture around what we're doing and, you know, having other people want to be a part of this outside of just buy token, buy coin, watch price go up. Like there has to be something outside of that. And when I watch that, that's the style of content that has gone viral since the beginning of YouTube. And so yeah. you're watching that. And again, the people who are seeing that, they might look at it and go, I don't know who these people are yet, but they become characters of a show basically, right? And so they'll start to learn, oh, who is that guy? Oh, that's Leap. Okay, let me learn more about Leap. Oh, that's Thread Guy. Love the mullet. Let me learn more about that guy. And all Love of a sudden, the mullet. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so they, you know, they might see Frank Stash and be like, "I need to know what that is." Hey, I'm bullish on Frank Stash. The stash is thick. Hey. The stash is thick. But you know, Pause. it's like they see <laughs> they see stuff like that, and they start to want to learn more about it. And then those people start to, you know, look at meme coins and stuff like that as more than just like these random ass like Doge coin and stuff like that. They look at it as now there's actual culture behind the people who are, you know, working in that ecosystem, everything like that. That's how the space grows. So I think that content in general is like incredibly, incredibly bullish for the space. I agree. And it's like being approached like how he kind of did with gaming and like kind of establishing culture over in the gaming space. And to be honest, like when people ask me how I got into NFTs, in, in crypto i usually say banks and that's only because he had this podcast uh and he would talk about nfts on it and it reminded me of like the call of duty days i don't know if you guys played like much call of duty and are aware of like the teams and the clans and stuff but like it reminded me of that niche side of the internet of course it's a little bit more uh mature because there's like money involved with nfts but it reminded me of that and so it kind of feels like he he sees like the same kind of thing and now he wants to bring it over into crypto and I don't know. It's cool. And like you said, familiar familiarization is like key. And uh, what do y'all yeah. think about um, what do y'all think about the long form videos on Twitter? I was just about to say I've that been too. seeing obviously Thread Guy's been putting out podcasts on yeah. Twitter um, and he exclusively on or I should say exclusively on X um, and they've been long form. I just tried it last week with our D weekly and I think we're going to try and start putting them out. Um you know, shout out to TG for the for the inspo on that. But uh, even with the vlog videos and all these things kind of living exclusively on X and then moving kind of more in the direction of of longer form video content. What do you guys think about that? I think it's cool because it. It's been a while since we've had I mean, say what you want about Elon, but he like on a culture level and understanding of social media he's like the most tapped in compared to someone like mark zuckerberg or whatever right and so that excites me and then the thing about twitter or x or whatever it's existed for so long and it it was only looked at as like this text-based like scrolling app but that means there's just like tons of these like you can take a playbook out of you know tiktok right because it, it's you know semi-similar to tiktok just tiktok's videos you can take a playbook out of youtube which they're already doing uh, or, or Twitch and like there's like streaming and stuff now. So I think it's like super exciting because it's like a new ball game with a platform that's already existed for so long and shown resistance, right? Whereas like if you're going all in, like TikTok happened to work, right? Because it was like short form content, but like it was a risk going like full on like into TikTok because who knows how long, like there's tons of platforms that come out every, you know, five years, two years that don't last. We've seen what happened with Vine, which is like an older Bro. whatever, right? But like Throw Vine was back. gangster. It was gangster. The six seconds. We had some classic videos come out of just a six second Vine. Like, Dude, the biggest Vine creators on YouTube right now are from Vine. Like yeah. you think about it, Logan Paul, Jake Paul. You and so it. like that Twitter could do the crazy. same thing. Yeah. You can that, do a lot in six seconds. That's crazy to think about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, has someone told you that before, Mark? <laughs> not to me. To make you feel better? Not me. About but something? I've just heard. Yeah, yeah I've just, I've just heard. heard. I've just heard. Wait, wait, you guys last longer than six months? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, no, that is, yeah, no, that, that that's a good point, though. I do think specifically for CT, it's even cooler because it's like all of us have spent so much time like exactly. building platforms on crypto Twitter for what the past like two, three years. Yeah. Um, And now that it's like 
all the all the people that we have connected with followers that you may have amassed all all these sort of things and it's like if you have you know familiarity with video content or you want to get into it it's almost like yo there's a lane yeah there's I mean, a lane open i would like to see my only thing would be i think there's still some like common sense changes that need yeah. to happen to x in order for the video aspect to grow right now if you put out a video a week later it's a pain in the ass for somebody to find that has to change like yeah. it, it has to be an easier experience I mean, for somebody we're to... early on no no but the but again You're these still are still early these are changes i want elon to make these are easy changes make it easier for people to find Is long it... format content what if it's not easy uh, figure it the fuck out life isn't easy <laughs> like <laughs> So so here would be my changes I want to see. I want to see them make it easier for you to find long format videos because, again, you can put them out, but right now it's difficult for somebody to find a week later, things like that. I think on top of that, you need to make the upload process way better. The upload process on YouTube right yeah. now is seamless. It's been, and mind you, again, they've been doing it forever, but there are things that they should be taking from that. I think on top of that, bring back the NFT verification for PFPs. I don't understand why they got rid of that. That change makes no sense. And Elon does cater a lot to the crypto and Twitter world. Why do you want the verification? It, because to me, it's there's no sense in not having it. There's, there's, what do you mean? They already had it. There's no sense to get rid of it. Like It makes a lot of sense. We're going to see more, more. We've seen already a ton. Anytime you put anything on Twitter, there's bots that comment on your shit. You mentioned crypto, anything. There's so many bots and things like that. Let's. That's one easy step that there's no reason to get rid of. Do it for Solana. Do it for ETH. Call today. Whatever but those are easy changes to make and then uh you know there's probably probably a few other changes that i could think of but like to me it's like common sense changes make it easier for for people to have access to these videos make it easier for people to verify who they are and everything like that and then you know i mean it's just little changes like that and then one other big thing is like if i'm watching a youtube video i can go and like you know take the video out of my screen and i can go do other things on my phone twitter has to do that too like that is a huge i can do that with twitter right now yeah if you're watching a clip yeah like are you talking about going to a different app yeah oh no maybe it's just scrolling I'm, right now no i'm talking about i want to i want to yeah, be it does go like smaller yeah in your, if but you're I don't like know if, going you, to a different if you want to keep scrolling yeah. twitter but yeah. that and that's that's an issue like again that's that's just a fix that they can for sure make because again you can do that with youtube and i think that is one of the big things of like expecting somebody to just be on your app all the time is not a realistic standpoint like if i'm driving i watch youtube videos or listen to them essentially while i'm driving all the time i can't do that with twitter so those are changes where i'm like make that change make it where again people are more likely than to invest a lot of time and energy into x and i do think they have done outside of crypto twitter they've done things with like tucker calls and a few other people that have like you know had reasons to go on to x and, and create content and again, I think there's a lot of opportunity there, but you have to think of ways to make that content easier for people to consume. And I think that's, you know, some of the changes I'd like to see them make. And I agree with every single change because those are things that I've talked about with the people around me and stuff is like there needs to be a placeholder. I do think it's it's difficult for Twitter X, whatever, uh, because there's a science like if you think about TikTok, like I, I compare the two because they are like very similar, like. TikTok, you're scrolling, right? And you're watching videos from random people. They happen to be funny. You throw a like. Very rarely do you like go to their profile or like maybe it's just me, but very rarely do you go to their profile and like watch more of their video or follow them and like become a fan of them. You just see a funny video. You hope your for you page is funny today and you keep scrolling. And like Twitter is like somewhat similar where it's like it's the same motion you're scrolling. So there's a science that they have to combat where it's like they need it so that the creators become like and they create like an actual fan base on Twitter because like I don't feel like that's an actual like no one's going to like you said no one's going through my media tab scrolling and watching my videos they're just watching my most recent one and then they call it a day and so I think there is a science that they have to combat where it's like no I'm going to go to their profile because I want to watch their content I want to binge watch their content and like YouTube's done it so well but like no other platform has really figured it out like Facebook hasn't uh TikTok was just good for the time and place and everything but like even Instagram, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think like right now, I think clips hit harder on on yeah. on Twitter than they do anywhere else. But again, I think it's like long format content. I think will have its day, but it's like there's still so many changes they would have to make for it to be truly the best platform for long format content. And again, I don't. I, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to look into it. That doesn't mean we shouldn't put long format content on there. But like again, YouTube right now reigns supreme. Would I like to see, you know, Elon make some changes and make X that much more powerful? Like, fuck yeah. I'll Hell start yeah. calling it X if he starts making some of these changes. Until then, it's Twitter. 
I you agree. sound like an NFT community member. Just a little, little, little time. <laughs> Dude, that's have a, a little bit of time. They just started going in this direction. I feel like Dude. there's. I feel like there should be a slight difference between what YouTube looks like and what X looks like when it does long form Twitter. Dude, so like, calling someone an NFT community member is crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Brutal. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, no, but I mean, like, you you don't want, worry, Mark. I hear you. He's hey, he's down on his bags right now. I want to see him make these changes so X can become that much more powerful. Oh, uh, what bags? Elon is. Yeah, have you oh, seen, yeah. have you seen his investment in the X? <laughs> it's down. He'll be. I, I mean, but do you think he but, yeah. like? At that scale, like, mm-hmm. he, he's doing it for the love of the game. I think I that's what's so exciting. For the love of the game at that point. <laughs> he's doing it for the love of the game. Honestly, I feel like he bought Twitter for the love of the game. Dude, he did, bro. That's, like, what's so exciting is, like, okay, sure, he's down brutal. He's definitely not sitting there and being like, ah, whatever. But, but like, he dude, got he's, money he still, said he like... wants to make it his playground. He's got, like, the biggest company in the world. He's got, like, what what's next? Are you How do you control the narrative in the world? You buy a platform that already has a bunch of users, you turn it into what you want, and now you control the news. Right, but I will only say we will know X is killing it when Elon's company stops accepting checks from all these scam crypto accounts. Like The moment that happens, we're like, okay, the advertising dollars are rolling in. They don't need to accept those anymore because right now they're accepting far too many of those, and they're, such, they're such, so easy to prevent. So, Or maybe they're just being decentralized with their promotions. No, I mean, like then you're just going to get sued eventually. Like It's, it's a terrible, it's a terrible <laughs> concept right now that needs to change, and it's because they're not getting the advertising dollars they once were. So that's the reality of it. So one once he changes that, make some of these changes, bring more people to Twitter. And like at that point, ad dollars will start rolling in, ad dollars start rolling in. They can stop accepting all that bullshit because I'm looking forward to that. Because again, it's like it is one of the things that is the hardest thing to if you're onboarding somebody into like crypto Twitter right now, dude, <laughs> like telling them to not get drained on X is like asking a lot. Dude, it's not even them. It's the board ape holders, too, dude. They get <laughs> brutalized out here. Those motherfuckers Bro. don't know how to make a hot and cold wallet. But, like, no, I hear you. The normies, yeah, I get it, dude. It makes sense. Yeah, so need to see those changes. But speaking of changes, and, and I think this is super dope. Earlier today, uh, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Ice Cube, tweeted out that he's offered Caitlin Clark. I don't, are you a basketball fan, WNBA? Sure. Okay. Well, no. there's. Do you know no. who? Do you know who Caitlin wait, Clark is? Wait. What kind of segue is speaking of changes to go into the big three? Because that. Because is that not a gigantic change to go from we're offering former NBA players an opportunity to play to we are offering a college women's basketball player the opportunity to come play? Is that not a big change? Before we it's jump, kind of a massive change. No. Uh, nah, nah, nah. I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll give it to you. With, we, okay. Like baseline like pitch like what is what is like the big three like what is that what is the I like you want to give the quick pitch it's 3v3 basketball in the in the u.s ice cubes league obviously um and yeah they have former nba players they have players from overseas um players can try out we have draft combines everything like that um and it's a physical game like they play a different style of basketball they're playing to 50 uh, there's cool rules in the game, like you play one on one to challenge calls, um, and it's just a lot more physical than the NBA as well. Um, so it's tougher to get a basket, um, mm. and yeah. Th- so the competition is like it's it's former NBA players plus overseas players plus like people that just you know you could try out and potentially have what it takes to be on a team. Okay, that makes sense. Because I was sitting here thinking that it's homies that haven't made it yet, that it's like a league before you kind of make it to the show. But this nah. is like, these are the homies that have, it's have just, they it, made it, and now they're... Well, not even just that, but it's just like, yeah, maybe you don't make the NBA. Like, for example, on the Killer Threes team, we have uh, we have Frank Nitty. And Frank Nitty never went to the NBA, mm-hmm. but he has a huge, huge basketball career outside of the NBA. Okay. In the sense, like, he played with, he played with Dame Lillard in college. Um, if you're familiar with the Drew League in LA, it's like a summer um, summer league, and uh, he's won the MVP there like four or five times, like multiple championships over there. He's like been on ball his life and like all this street ball stuff, everything like that. Like he's just been a hooper for so long, and is really good, but just never went to the NBA, right? Yeah. Um, he's on the Killer Threes team. You know what I'm saying? So it's not all it's not all people that necessarily had to go to the NBA, but I mean if you could hoop, you could hoop. And it's a different style of basketball. It's not five on five, it's three on three. Um and so that makes like slight changes for sure. 
Okay, that helps me understand just so that when we roll into what you're about to say, I can like at least participate to the best of my ability. Yeah, yeah. So then there's so then there's Caitlin Clark who plays for Iowa and she's I would say the best women's college basketball player of all time. Like I think that's pretty much non uh, debatable at this point. And so she has probably garnered more attention for women's basketball than probably the last person to do that would have been like I don't know, like maybe like back in the day, like even before Brittany Griner, like Lisa Leslie, like in she's terms the Ronda Rousey of college women's basketball. Yeah. I mean, she's, okay. she's that electric. That's a, that's a, that's a yeah. Honestly, good. she's a great person to compare it to that's because Ronda Rousey was probably the first like UFC women's fighter that got men to watch. Like yeah. who were really like, I want to watch Ronda play. Yeah. Caitlin Clark's the same way in terms of like even Brittany Griner never did that. Lisa Leslie somewhat did that, but like, you know, it was something where you want to watch Caitlin Clark play. Like Bro, I was she is so nice. Oh, dude. She is like so she good. Is so nice. Like if if you watch if you've ever seen Steph Curry play, not to say that they're like whatever the same, but like she does that type of stuff. Like step she back answer. three deep three, like pull up in your face, whatever. Like, bro, she is She's nasty. She's different. Yeah. Okay. She's different. So basically earlier today, Ice Cube came out and announced that they're offering uh, Caitlin Clark $5 million to come play in the big three, but she can also still play in the NBA or the WNBA. So basically in the off season, she could play in the big three. And no, I think it's the WNBA season and big three season overlap, but they said she could play in both. Yeah. So, okay, so she she wouldn't like the games. Big three games are always on the weekends. There would probably be games that are like, yeah, so they were going to basically they're going to let her play in both. She would she'd make far more money. The five million is far more than any WNBA players ever been paid directly from the WNBA, maybe in endorsements and things like that. Other people have made more, but like it's a gigantic offer. We'll see if she accepts it, but I mean, it would be. I tweeted out earlier if Caitlin Clark ends up on the Killer Threes, I might be at every game. Like, listen, it would be. It's insane. crazy that you wouldn't just go to every game to support your team, but th- we'll, we'll 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 talk about that later. I'm I'm, um, I'm gonna be honest. I need something that exciting, and Caitlin Clark is must see TV right now. She's absolute must see TV. So open recruitment, Caitlin Clark. If you want to come to the Killer Threes. We got a spot for you. Not only will you get the five million from Ice Cube, but you can come on the podcast. A huge, there you go. <laughs> huge opportunity that she's obviously looking forward to. Sonny, can we get her some D Gods merch? How about that? Can we throw that in? We'll get we'll get the D Gods merch going. There we go, uh, Jakey. What can you offer? I'll take a selfie with her. Oh, wow, selfie of a selfie a day with yeah. Jakey. Like if if Caitlin Clark doesn't accept that, she's fading generational wealth. Can we get her some meme coins? We'll, we'll, Let's get her we'll, some meme make, coins. we'll make her the top influencer on CT. Easy. Caitlin Clark with basketball, like easy meme coin, you know, I, I mean, it. like I'd ape it, you know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I mean, realistically, I will see. That was a terrible offer. I'm so sorry. Just come to the killer. <laughs> <and play basketball. laughs> she was thinking about it. Now she's like, Never mind. Yeah. She's like, what are meme coins? Yeah. <laughs> Just take the five milli from cube and, and, and <laughs> select the killer from threes. cube. Cause honestly, Wait, cubes offer. <laughs> oh, ice cube. Ice cube, <laughs> not cube exchange. <laughs> Wait, yo, cube exchange. Yeah. I mean, we might we have can, to yeah. we can get you on the phone, but, yep. um, Nah, just take the take the five milli from Ice Cube and uh, come play for the best fans in the Big Three. That's the go. offer. There That's is. the That's offer. That's the offer. It would be it would be crazy. It would be crazy. Hey, we can if we can also get a little Cube Exchange deal too. Cube on Cube. That With, would, yo, Caitlin Clark and Dominique Johnson as our shooters. How many teams are there in the league? Nasty. How many teams are there? Twelve. Yeah, I was gonna say something. So we like got a one one in twelve chance of her yeah. playing. Well, yeah. she's got to accept the deal first. Yeah. I mean, it would be crazy. I mean, it would be. We've never really seen any. Any sport where, like, there's a true crossover of, like, men and women playing in the same league and that can actually compete. And she could compete. Like, you Bro, know, her hitting four point shots would, would be, be crazy. Insane. Yeah, because there's a four point shot in, in Big Three. So, what is that from half court? Basically. No. Mm, no close enough. It's no. No. It's just like, it's about five, five or seven feet beyond the three point line. It's deep. Oh, yeah. Wow. But it's she could deep. hit it. She could hit it. So, would be crazy. I mean, I truly think that would be. If we talk about things that would make the killer, or like make the big three, something that like would gain national attention, everything like that, in terms of like more and more people watching. If you're looking for that thing that's going to make sure that I the, mean the entire season would be viral. Yeah, simply oh, yeah. put, yeah. like the entire season would be viral if she played whatever team she played for, it'd be viral. I mean, this is the most I've heard about like women's like college basketball ever. Yo, honestly, so, they've been killing it. 
Yeah. They're more exciting right now than the men's basketball. Oh, the men's college basketball season's trash. Like, I, I want to see Angel Reese going up against Caitlin Clark. That's all I, I care about. I need the rematch. Yeah, I need it. I need it. And that is, uh, yeah, I mean, again, and it's like seeing people. This, this is the part that I like, is that I do think in, in anything like this, you can't be afraid to take risks, whether you're talking about Web3, whether you're talking about Big 3, whether you're talking about anything, anything at all. Like, you can't be afraid to take risks, and it's like, who knows? Maybe she maybe she turns it down. But you know what? I went on the ESPN today. Number one article was talk Ice Cube offering Caitlin Clark five million dollars. Right. So it's like right Honestly, then and there. Just doing it. Yeah. yeah. And and if and if it's not Caitlin Clark who accepts it, who knows? Maybe it's Angel Angel Reese. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe like maybe there's something else that happens. I don't know. But regardless, to to think outside the box. If you want a league to stay around, you got to be able to think outside the box. That's what he's doing right now. I love to see it. And again, I think that's like. We talked about this off the podcast, on the podcast, whatever, but like the crypto and NFT space has changed a lot in the last like six months. And now all of a sudden people are getting far and more into meme coins and stuff like that. What used to be considered like, oh, you're going to ruin your reputation. Talk about meme coins. Now you can talk about it openly and people love it. So again, it's like you can't be afraid to take risks, try new things, stuff like that. I think that's what Ice Cube's doing. We'll see where it goes, but would be crazy. Would be crazy. And D God's going to be right there front and center. You're talking about. You're talking about uh, earlier in the podcast, we were talking about kind of that crossover, right, of trying to get normies involved. Like, yeah. we, we kind of saw that a little bit last season on the ground uh, when we were in these arenas. Like, people were just paying attention because of Killer Threes. But it's like our ba- branding is on this Killer Three stuff, right? Like, we're on the jersey. It says D-Gods. Like, you see the Killer Threes hat right there. It's like it has the D on the side. And it's just like the small, subtle things that it's – constant brand building but that's like that's a whole different audience a yeah. whole different audience um and they're into it because they see us being into it you know and, and it goes a long way i'm just looking forward to like web3 just gaining some more legitimacy this year like that's that's really probably the part that i think i'm the most like bullish on is like web3 actually having more of a personality now than ever before i mean obviously we talked about it with like banks content but i think about a lot the video game world is something i just pay attention to because i think there's a lot of crossover and i look at like fortnite i was never a huge gamer didn't grow up really playing like a, a shit ton of like you know first person shooter games i was playing more nfl madden nba 2k stuff like that but when i would smoke you in 2k please I would smoke you. No shot. I no shot. Smoke I'll, you. I'll dust your ass with I the pistons. Would smoke you. Please. With the pistons? Please. Bro, you can play with the all time pistons. I'll smoke you. Please. Okay. Regardless. The uh <laughs> but when I when I was on YouTube a lot, like in, in college and then getting out of college and stuff like that, I started watching Nick Merck's content. Yeah. And and Nick Merck's is not the best video game player of all time. He'll he's the first person to say it. Like there are people who are better than me and everything like that, but he's incredibly entertaining. And he's obviously still very good, but like he's incredibly incredibly entertaining and so i would watch it and it got me to start playing some of the different games that he plays because i was like this is just entertaining content and i think that's the thing that we can take notes from is like even you know jakey when i think about your content when i think about some of sunny's content some of my content and everything like that it's like we all make content that caters to more people than besides just web three people and i think that's important i think it's important to show that we have personalities outside of just web three we can talk about more things outside of just web three we can make content that appeals to more people and by doing that it legitimizes everything that is going on in web three because then somebody who's watching it goes like oh hey well i just saw this video of like some doing x y and z like okay let me learn more about this guy oh he's you know d god's uh co-president like let me learn more about that oh he's got a podcast let me watch that some something with jakey they're like oh this dude just put a shit ton of clothespins on his face let me learn more about this guy right (laughs) and and all of a sudden there's the onboarding process of somebody going hey you're entertaining let me learn more and i think that's one of the biggest things that if we can if we can show that we're more than just people who can talk about you know the nft tokenomics and and you know all this kind of shit like yes that stuff's fun to talk about we're always going to do that but again if you can cater to more show that you have more depth than that we're going to bring more and more people into it and that's what i look forward to with this whole next year and i think that's why content's so important because if you're able to put it without like without using the word nfts right or like meme coins or what, like take the terminology out of it and you're able to just make a good piece of content that maybe has a gimmick of web3 in it but it's somewhat something that, like again. I hate to bring this up, but it was like that's that's what we were going for with the Mad movies. Although it didn't hit it on like it didn't it didn't do what I hoped it had do, or maybe it was a little early. But that was like the idea was like let's just make cool content, 
the web two people that have no idea what a mad lad is likes the content the familiar familiarization with the the phrasing like fuck it and stuff like that on the t-shirts it like starts like you know like it turn gears like in their head right and so the next thing you know they're like kind of going down the loophole maybe they're checking out the mad lads instagram and then it's the twitter and then they're like okay these are like digital collectibles and they have like it's like it you you have to like rope them like kind of um not like suddenly but like slowly yeah. right instead of like throwing it all at them at once because that's when it becomes overwhelming 100 percent. i think there's also i think there's an aspect of um the entertainment but also them seeing real people like actual real authentic genuine people behind the camera and it's like yeah. oh there's real people in web3 it's not just a non-accounts and people behind screens and you're not just like i don't know have this stereotype of someone just staring at a computer screen all day that's in a dark room that's what i'm saying dude and relatability. that's all they're doing you know relatability. what i'm saying personality and i've seen that come to life in in person um, and maybe you can speak to this as well, but when I have my, uh, videographer, shout out to Micah, when I have him with me and we went through the big three season, we went to art Basel together. He's coming to New York, uh, this next week. Yeah. He's not in web three, not in NFTs and has only been exposed to it based off of following me on Twitter and then actually got exposed to the real life energy of it in person at all these events and was like, Yo, yeah, dude. What the fuck? Like, legitimately looking at me sometimes, like, what the fuck? You have this many people. They're they're cool as fuck. Yo, D gods is sick. This is like all that stuff, right? And yeah. has and has slowly just been continuing to pay attention and just, oh, what should I buy? Or oh, let me get you a phantom wallet and this and 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 just like you know, kind of slowly yeah, yeah. getting them set up. And I feel like you could probably speak to it as well, maybe with Colton, like. It's the it, exactly what you just explained is like with Colton. I although though I think like what won him over was like setting him up with Bonkbot and training like me. Oh, there you but go. like yeah. but he was like <laughs> but he was like coming to all the events and like he was slowly like being fed and like kind of red pilled a little bit and like you and, see it over time. And, and you're and, and you're not even forcing it. It's no. just yo, come 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 hang out with my peoples over here. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the to me, it's again, it, once we we we've now gotten out of that bubble of like that in 2021, it was like people didn't really have like a personality on crypto Twitter for the most part. It was like pretty much like everybody were just these anonymous people that didn't really talk about anything. But, you know, whatever NFTs they were buying and everything like that, we've just seen such a hard pivot in the last year where I think during the bear market it was like there's nothing to talk about with what we've got going on. So fuck it. Let's just talk about other shit that's happening in the world, because what else are we so gonna everybody talk about? just started talking? talking about how to make content and not actually creating content. Do you remember how bad the bear market was in the, in the summer? Everybody was just talking <laughs> about content, but they weren't making any. It yeah. was like, this is how you do this, but it's like, we'll just do it. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's, that's Talk why, shit. that's why I hit up Soul <laughs> Casino in, uh, in August, or whatever I hit up Soul Casino. And I was like, guys, we got to make content for this NFL season. Cause I can't just keep talking about how depressing this market is right now. <laughs> yeah, and okay. like, also, there are people in this world that pay attention to more things than just NFTs and crypto. Let's make content that, that can engage them in that way. And the amount of people that came up to me over the last you know six months just saying, dude, I thoroughly enjoyed those videos. Even people that were like, I don't really follow the NFL, but like I started following a little bit more yeah. after like knowing you were a diehard Lions fan and making content and everything like that. And so again, it's like you make content that can cater to more people. And still my number one video to this day was Sonny shooting a reaction video video of me reacting to the Detroit Lions losing and it went stupid viral people loved it in the crypto Twitter world but then also in the like bro when that shit hit mainstream and you had like Freddie Gibbs commenting on your video and all these other people like look at this dumbass he thought bro dude and that's the cool thing too is because like <laughs> so with, funny with like sports betting and sports like that's another you mentioned gaming but that's like another combination where it, like it they all both just like hand. go hand in hand yeah. and like so you get the you post that video all the CT people are like, ha, Mark, you're so funny. You're so cute. But then you get all the Web 2 people that come in and go, you fucking idiot. Like, you know what I mean? And and that's how that's Hilarious. how we make this stuff. Again, you have to give personality to it. Again, I look at all these different other sectors and I kind of look at how they've made content around it and how they've made like a personality for it. Again, when you talk about sports gambling and stuff like that. 
Barstool Sports, one of the easiest ways to look at people who have added a personality to sports gambling. Yep. Then you have individuals like Book It with Trent, who is like one of my favorite people to follow uh, in the sports gambling world. But he made co- so much content around sports gambling that all of a sudden I was like, I don't really even give a shit what he's betting on. I just want to engage with it because it's like his content so damn funny with it. And again, I think that's what we're going to see in this next year as more and more people start making content. Even if you saw that, you know, Beck's video of the Solana girls, if you watched that and you were like, this is fucking, you know, cringe, whatever. It's like, bro, it did stupid numbers because people were entertained by it. So whether you didn't like it, liked it, whatever, however you felt, it got engagement because people were entertained by it. And again, if you make that sort of content, people are going to pay attention to it. And same thing we saw with with Nick and everything like that from Bodogos. And it's like the content is the name of the game. Make content that that caters that shows that you have more layers than just like the initial crypto layer. And again, you're going to cater to far more people. And that is how we grow the space. We really want to talk about growing it. That's how you do it. You know, even like I've got a third podcast dropping that I haven't really talked about a lot because I've been doing it more behind the scenes. Oh, so you're going to show right now. No, not not even. <laughs> so the name of the podcast, <laughs> but but truly the reason why I'm doing it, it's with my good friend Anna, who I've been tight with for like six or seven years. And the reason why I'm I'm dropping that podcast is because I talk about plenty of other. Like I had the podcast before getting into crypto Twitter and everything like that, and I'm like, hey, I want to show like the other side of my personality. I can talk about a number of different life subjects. Let's bring on my friend Anna. We're going to give the male and female perspective on a number of different things. And like, who knows where that goes. But again, it's like, and there's always going to be some level of crossover. You know, I posted a photo the other day of somebody from Too Out to Handle sitting right there. Who's still not as good looking as Jakey sitting in that seat. Or you, son. Damn right. But, uh, but you know, all of a sudden people were like, wait how the fuck is somebody from too out to handle sitting on the couch? And it's like, guys, this is how sitting we sitting on the couch, the couch, baby. This is, this is how we do it though. This, <laughs> this nasty is nasty couch. The couch. <laughs> nasty. This is some good shit. Okay. Um, shout out to Castlery. Good, good company, you know? Um, no, but I think it's also not making uh mid curve type shit, right? Where that video Beck's video, for example, it incited, either a positive response or a negative response. And I, I had a similar tweet to this a couple of days ago talking about uh, D gods and just Frank where they can put something out and still incite that same level yeah. of either it's positive or it's negative. There's nobody that just like, is just like, Oh, this is whatever or neutral or like, that's doesn't the give last a fuck. place you, you want to be. Yeah. You don't want to be in that mid. Yeah. It's more when you put something out, you need the people that are negative too. I, I heard, um, Actually, J. Cole talk about this when a uh, first person shooter came out where uh, somebody was asking him on a podcast about, you know, what do you think about all these people that make up narratives about music and and all these things about you guys and, and what's going on? He's like, you know, it's needed for what we do because you need people to care about this enough to want to make narratives and pick sides and put you as a character in this bigger story whatever and it's the same thing on whatever level of content that you're making it's like you're playing a a a part in that um in that ecosystem and in that just full-on narrative of what that is right like beck played a part in like crypto girls narrative whether that's positive whether that's negative that's for the person like you know watching it to 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 figure out for themselves But it's like she she that's like a stamp in now like crypto girls narrative. Same with the Cardano girls. Shout out to them. Like did the same thing. Right. Like made a stamp of of either positive or negative reaction. And I think when you're doing that specifically in this crypto space, like that's where you want to be. And if you're not doing that and it's just kind of like, oh, we're chilling. We're mid curve with this. Like, yeah, the last place you want to be is neutral. Like Kanye's Kanye for a reason, right? And it's, it's facts, like honestly. And and it's actually cool that we're like talking about Beck's video because I'm like thinking in my head, like while we're talking, and I'm thinking about Nick. And it's like same thing. It, it it's the same thing, but it's like the same thing to a T where the crypto Twitter people either know Beck or, or Nick is being satire or like kind like the intention is for it to be cringe. Yeah. But then the people that are like on the outside, don't pick that, it up. Yeah, they don't don't pick it up. Or like usually the people that aren't on CT like very often or don't even know what it is. And that's where it's kind of cool because it's creating that like nonchalant like combination. You know, if something's so like horrible, what? Oh, I don't want to bring this up actually. Have you guys ever seen like two girls one cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, but listen, listen, oh, not, but listen, wait, 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 no, bro, listen. what's that? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> dude, no, dude, this fucker. Yeah. Dude, not I've never, all. I've never seen it. Okay, Y'all so like, I'm a bad Blue example. Waffles and shit? Dude, <laughs> dude, yeah, shit like that. But like, you hear people talking about that, and then you go and check it out. So it's like, it's like, it's a horrible you wish example. You didn't, but yeah, exactly. So I hate to relate what I just brought up, and it's only because we talked about it this morning. But I hate to relate that to like Beck's video or like Nick's stuff. But it's like. It's, it's so bad that it's like you kind of want to check it out. Bro, it's prolific. It's it, it's like the same thing as like looking at an accident and like people always just stopping yeah, so they can like look at what's going on. And it's it's like a train wreck. You just like can't look away. You people, want people want to be caught in the mix. Yeah, that's why Mark was they a co-host the for Slurf. Like he wanted to be caught in the mix. He wanted to be caught in the drama. That was smart. When well, I was, you should have. Yeah, you should have been doing that. When I was younger, I, I was went, jealous. I didn't. I went to the mall with my family and there was like a. Uh, like the police had like drawn out their weapons and it was like a live like yo get out the way this is like the shooting thing oh, or shit. whatever and like my mom had us like in the in the way just because we were like trying to check out what was going on and it's just like you want to be in the in the drama in the know of like yo yeah bro what are you guys looking at like probably should have left but yeah uh, yeah guns i mean we, yeah we, i mean we went in the mall after that but it's, it's all i mean good, curiosity yeah. man curiosity, curiosity killed the cat always yeah it, it did That's kill the cat, though. Yeah. Hey, the cat's got nine lives, though. You know what I mean? That's true. He's got eight more. Let's see how he goes. But, oh, Gucci. Um, wow, didn't think we were going to bring up two girls, one cup on this podcast. Yeah, it's brutal. I, yeah. I, sh- I wish I had a better example, oh. but it's what we talked about this morning. Yeah, well... But- why well, you guys talk? Wow, you guys li- 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 I don't know where it, where it came from, and then he tried showing me. I got mad or whatever. So, but Colton yeah. Colton's cutting strays. He's not even on this podcast. Yeah, they can't even see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna man. take I'm gonna take a photo. I'm gonna take a photo of him in this moment. Colton, wave. Colton, wave. There it is. There he is. All right, we'll add that into the podcast. That but, is hilarious. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, <laughs> I don't know where we pivot from there. So, so anywho, uh, anywho New and- York. No, <laughs> Um, hey, New York's a good pivot. Yeah, you know. The uh, yeah, I mean, again, I think you got the memo this time. I did get the memo. I'm looking you know, forward to. I New know York. you missed East Denver. I, I did miss East Denver. I'm looking forward to New York. It's gonna be a. Uh, It'll be fun. It's gonna be a great time. There's no, it's there's events like every every moment of every day. Um, Bro, there's 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 mad amount of events going on. Yeah. There's there's a lot of projects. Um, getting together. We have uh, the yacht parties coming back. That's gonna be crazy. Yeah, I gotta make the sure magic get eating on yacht parties coming back. I think you'll be able to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. Some You're so jakey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but like, the, dude, people. Hey, no, say talk that. your shit. You're so jakey. Yeah, but, You're we, jakey. but I can't go to the jakey. door and say some no, shit. No, no, like you that. can't. I would never no, no, do no, that, no. Don't do that. I never do don't that. Don't do that that's because awful. there's somebody on this podcast that did that and it didn't go well. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. They were like, "Yo, I'm." That's not how this went down. Yo, I'm blank, blank. That's you should let me. That is. Sonny's talking about a situation he was not at. This is, this is, this is, you know. I kind of want to hear it now. You know the game of telephone. Yo, y'all, have y'all seen Ashley Decan's video where she talked about influencers trying to get at parties in Basel? And she's like, I'm Ashley Decan, or like, I'm an influencer in this space. <laughs> I didn't see it. Like, but, no, you know, it's funny as fuck, but I sent it to Mark immediately after that. And I was like, bro, why was this you? <laughs> you got to tell me the story now. No, that's, that's, uh. That's a uh, that's an off the podcast story. Okay, it's, okay. it's not even honestly. It's not even worth getting into. But Sonny is uh, Sonny's capping. Oh man, Sonny's capping. Mark right. Mark be trying to walk into places like I'm Mark. Oh Wilson. yeah, really? That's how I'm I... the most important person oh, on that's... Solana. Wow. If not the most important person on crypto Twitter. If not the world at that point, bring me into the VIP. Yeah. <laughs> bring me into the. You all better give me VIP. They're gonna be like, we don't even have VIP tickets. So give me VIP. That's Mark. <laughs> You're gonna make one. Yeah. Bitch. You're gonna make one specifically for Mark. So yeah. But uh, <laughs> that's, no, we we that's got crazy. His, we got his tickets this time around. I'm that, like, you know, trying to trying to help him out on the back end and be like, yo. Sign up for this. And make sure you get this. The, 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 the real, sure the short, good, that's a real friend. You know what I'm saying? The short Thank story you, is, the short Appreciate story it. is there was one event at our Basel <laughs> that for whatever reason, when I was trying to do the like, you know, proof of token or whatever to get like the ticket. Sounds it, like a skill. It issue. just was not working. And so I kind of thought, all right, won't be that big a deal. I'll just be able to, it was a D-God I'm party. It's a D-God party. I was okay. like, I'll pull up. It won't be that big a deal. It ended up a bigger deal than I thought, <laughs> and so because they have people outside scanning. The well, okay, tickets. but we're not. Well, again, and usually those people that are scanning, like it's usually like hired security or something, right? Yeah, like, it was it's a, like people that don't like aren't. Yeah, a you know how it goes. Like, I yeah. didn't think it was gonna end up being as much of a clusterfuck as it was. It was a bit of a clusterfuck. <laughs> it worked itself out. It is what it is. Again, there's I'm too, definitely lying on Mark's th- name. There's yeah, there's too many. Yeah. I, <laughs> 
I definitely <laughs> at no point ever did I say I am I'm Mark Colser. Let me in. That never happened. So let's clarify that. But I don't believe that though. I could see that. Listen, I could see you saying that. Why would I say that when I already know? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, that was that another one. bar, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was talk my shit. Listen, yeah, it's hard shit. as a five foot seven man to talk your shit because you know I mean like I know I know where I'm at. You know it's like I know it's hard to say. Like what am I gonna do? I'm, I'm Mark Holzer. All right, bro, you 5'7", sit down. Like, that's what I would say to that guy. So, like, I mean, you know, short, short problems. You don't have that problem. You're tall. You got until you shrink, until I grow. You know, I had that problem until I was, like, 17. I was a late bloomer, dude. I didn't hit puberty until I was, like, 17, and then randomly I woke up and I was six foot one day. You're mm-hmm. giving Mark hope right Maybe now. Maybe I'll hit puberty, dude. Dude, I don't that's know. Um, it, it can you're happen. You're giving him hope. I heard he... you shrink as you get older, though, so. <laughs> I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. fucked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, getting back to New York, yeah, uh, sign up for tickets, but like I'm sure you could get tickets here, Soul Jakey. Uh, you are you are him. We we do got to give you your I'll flowers. Take it. You Himothy him. Jakey. Uh, I like Himothy that. Jakey. Soul Himothy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Himmy Neutron. <laughs> Jake Himothy. Yeah. You know. Actually. Um, like so, yeah. No, um, but it, it'll be it'll be a great time. I'm looking forward to it. Again, I, I, it's like I think these events too are another great way for other people to kind of see what we're doing over here in this space. And like, you know, I think Sonny does a great job of like on Instagram and stuff. He's always posting like the different events he's at and like, he'll slightly drip crypto into it, but not like overbearing by any means. And I think that's something where somebody then sees that and they're like, all right, let me dive into like what Sonny's going to. Cause he's at all these events. He's doing all these things. And again, I think that's the way that we continue to grow this space is by more and more people going to these events, having a good time. They make content around it. Next thing you know, somebody else is like, hey, what is that? And I think that's one of the ways, again, that we can grow this space and get to the point where, like, whether you're an, like into investing in these different coins and things like that, whether you're into that or not, like, just getting more people to understand what we have going on. I think that's the next bar. Because, again, same thing with video games, same thing with sports gambling, same thing with all this kind of stuff, is there have been people that have made content around that to the point where somebody else might be like, hey, I don't even play that game, but I'll watch that content. I might, you know... I don't, you know, maybe I'm not sports gambling all the time, but I'll watch, you know, Barstool's this, this, and this. Like, again, I think there are ways that you can kind of drip that content to make it exciting enough that people want to pay attention. I think these events do a great job of that. So, absolutely. I, dude, I think, um, like, the actual event and party, like, for sure. And then, like, you, uh, like, specifically, like, just traveling. And, like, you, like, posting on Instagram and stuff, it's like everybody wants to travel. Like, I've never met a person that doesn't say, I want to go here, I want to go there. And, like, the cool thing about what we all do is, like, we get to travel a ton. And it's not just, like, you know, in terms of, like, monetarily or anything. It's just, like, why would I go out to Singapore this year? Like, I could be doing something, like, else. I could go somewhere else. We're going to Singapore because there's a dope event that's happening for the Solana blockchain. It's, like, it just provides that opportunity right in front of you. So, being able to showcase those things, why I've been here, why I'm there, why I'm, you know, uh, like, that can sell people itself. And then you just add the party into the mix. You... Dude, the free shit, dude. I'm like, I'm only ever wearing NFT merch. I showed up and Sonny gave me this this sweater, and I'm gonna probably wear it for the next three days. <laughs> I don't know where Sonny gets shit. clothes. Like, I I saw one of his videos at one point. Sonny's like, I just got back from such and such event. Let me show you guys all the shit I got. And I'm like, all right, he's going to pull out one or two things. You know, and then I'm looking, it's like an eight minute video, like, eight, <laughs> eight minute video. My man's got a whole goddamn wardrobe. He starts pulling. I got, I haven't even opened this up. What is this? Oh yeah. Look at this shit. Dope as fuck. Pulls out something else. Sonny's him. Pulls out this. I'm like this guy out here just collecting a whole goddamn closet every time he goes to an event. And I mean, it's truly like, I'm like, you just never need to buy clothes ever again. I mean, that shirt, I've never seen you wear that. But, like, now you got a new shirt. Like Shout out to the sniper Let game. me guess. You Soul got that sniper. this week. Well, I got, I got these made for them. You know? Oh, okay. See? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, he's... You know, Same I thing. To, I had to get mine. You know, Soul Sniper. I got a little... I got a little D God's drip sample over here. There we for go. Some sweats coming out. There we go. Got the Razo hat. There we go. Kitaro shades always. What's the necklace? You know, that's me. That's that's, just, that's that's from my mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that. Yeah. That'll get clipped. That's, that's nice. Man, that's <laughs> super wholesome. Look at that. Um, yeah, no. Actually, that that was wild because like that was after speaking of travel. That was after literally two weeks of travel. Yeah, I was bro. at Denver for like damn near a week. Then we turned around, went to Chicago. Then I turned around, went to Miami for a quick weekend, and like was just out for for two weeks. So I come back and I just have like. I don't even know, like 10, 12 packages. Um, 
I Dude, got, yeah, I got some luggage. I got some t-shirts, sunglasses. Like, I, I got a bunch of this hat. Wait, you got, got luggage? A, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to show you the D-Gods luggage. It's this crazy. man out here getting luggage? Bro, this, what do you mean? Like a luggage bag? Like a like... carry-on. Yeah, yeah. Like a carry-on bag. Oh, that's good, oh, yeah. sir. Oh, yeah. With the D-Gods logo sweet. on it, it's fire. But like and speak- a little crossbody with my PFP on it, fire. Who, That's gangster. Who's that from, bro? Bugatti Group. Shout out to Bugatti Group. Unbelievable. We we gonna make some custom soon for for people to get one of ones and shit. That's sunny, man, bro. Wait, so it's D God, it's D God's branded luggage. Yeah, but it's can, from this uh from this company called Bugatti Group. Can they basically do whatever? Yeah, like hundred percent. Put whatever you want. Yeah, on you want to tap in? Yeah, dude, I want to do speedos. Oh, gotcha. I think you. that'd be gangster. Easy. Yeah. Run it. Put that on luggage too. How funny would it be if your suitcase was you in a speedo? Oh, dude, that could happen. That would be. Honestly, would be so funny. <laughs> Every time dude. that comes down the carousel and there, someone's like, whose suitcase is that? And you That's walk up and grab it. That's like, branding as fuck. Yeah. It is, dude. Like, what else do people see so often? Like, when you're traveling in an airport, it's like, dude, you could wear a sweater with, like, you know, my naked body on it. But if it's on my suitcase and I'm doing bag check, are you kidding me, dude? That will yeah. be so With funny. my OnlyFans link underneath or whatever I want to do. Hey, yo. Dude. Wow. Look Jake. at that. But, yeah, I'm really the plug. Yeah, Mark. You are the plug. Yeah, I'm the yeah. plug. Yeah. yeah. You the electrical outlet. You the yeah. That, no, nope. we didn't. We didn't have that to didn't go work. Out. That no, didn't work. That no, didn't we work. We could have just yeah. kept it. Yep. We could have kept it G, and then you kind of took it like electrical outlet. Just doesn't really flow off the tongue. You know what not, I mean? Yeah. Not yeah. even. Not even in the slightest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Jakey, I want to know. <clears throat> so here's my question for you. So we've got a, a little stunt that's happening on Friday. We're not gonna. We're not gonna give the specifics yet. I'm yeah. so but I, mad. I'm missing this. <clears throat> I tough. am too, to be honest, dude. Tough. I was pretty disappointed when you seeing, said you're not going to Seeing Sonny, uh, well, well, actually, the, I don't want to give, I, I can't give some specific, the, the first stunt specifics. that we did went off. That's true. The That's to- what I'm saying. The Tully at East right? Denver. Yeah. Yeah, that shit. I what? think this one, I think this one's even going to be bigger. Bro, so that shit was funny as fuck. So here's what I want to know from you, Jackie. When you're, when you're creating ideas for stunts like this, what's your kind of like creative process? Are you thinking about like what is like end game? We get, you know. 10 million views because we elicited this sort of reaction out of people and then working backwards from that or like what's your creative process in coming up with these ideas i mean to be fair this was a colton idea i mean okay well we were originally thinking like okay the cyber truck is like the most eye-catching wait are you are you are you saying shit dude hold on the car that we're using (laughs) is the most eye-catching and viral thing right now on the internet and so we were trying to come up with ideas around that car and then Colton had come up with the idea of what we're going to do with that car. This is tough, dude, without like... The 2001 Civic? Sure. Let's yeah. go with that. With the 2001 Civic and what we're going to do with that car. And then for me, dude, I'm always... I'm like, okay, let's run it tomorrow. Let's check Turo. Let's rent the car and everything. And then I have like Wish and Colton and Steve. And they're like, no, nah, no. Nah, we got to like plan it out. We got to plan the route. We got to get the props and stuff. And so, I mean, like for me, I just know it's going to... I mean, I don't want to jinx anything. I just, I, I have a feeling it's going to do well just because of what's around it. Like the actual car, the route that we're going to take, uh, the props involved in the video and stuff. It just, it just makes sense to me in my head. Do you, do you ever worry about like when you make content, like obviously there's certain things where you may, you may have some sort of like police attention that you get from some of these things, even though it's not like crazy illegal but like again even taking like the anatoly stunt right it's like there's an element of people who knows how people react to it right like fam fam this man this man right here i love him and i'm so glad he is still here with us (laughs) because this man wanted to run on stage while rfk was speaking it's true and they came up to us when we were just doing our stunt and we were like and was like we have guns you don't get the fuck out of here yeah like nuts, so I can only imagine that if he ran up there, what do you think was gonna happen? I'm so you know grateful I'm we saying? got the like, no the night before I'm, on the I'm, original idea. I'm so happy about that, but I will say from like a, a a behind the scenes perspective, like they're locked in. Like yeah, like Jakey called me for that for that stunt. Right, I had n- no idea about it. They were literally like, "Yo, we need you for something." Jakey's gonna call you in X amount of time. He calls me Facetime. He's like, "Yo." Pitches the like pitches an idea of what the skit looks like, right? As far as just like, yo, I'm wearing this. Uh, you're gonna be a security guard. We're gonna walk through the event. This is what we're gonna make it look like. This is what we're trying to make it feel like. Everything like that, right? So I have an understanding. 
But like you see them pull up in their fucking black suburban. Yeah. And they're just fucking dripped out. Wish is dripped out. Colton's ready to go. Steve is in there just hyped. Got his fucking off whites on as a security guard. But it's just dude, it was electric in that car. It was electric. But it was fun. Like seeing all that come together, it's like, you know, like y'all got like a legitimate squad just like putting this together. And I think it's uh I mean, just like being a part of it from a from an outside type perspective, like there's a lot of like care, effort um and just like thought that goes behind that shit and like it's yeah. dope it's really dope no i appreciate that and i i guess what i was getting at before too was like yeah it's a team effort like um everything like whether it's the creative like coming up with like the concept or it's gathering like the props and stuff or like dude i called you up this week i was like i'm like yo i'm desperate like we need like some help and you were willing to like come in clutch and get us like the two things that we needed like super badly so it's a team effort you know with the people all around us and stuff and I don't know. It should be exciting. Um, I just, I, I always respect so much your, your creative process with all of it. Because again, it's like when, when you hear the idea, you're like, this makes a shit ton of sense, <laughs> but getting there, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how you got there. And again, I know you've got a great group of people around you that you work with on all this kind of stuff, but uh, you know, content is the name of the game. And again, and that's what I look forward to. And I think that the part where all three of us are like incredibly happy with the direction of the space right now, because content has become that much more crucial in the last like six months and it's like you can only think about where it's going to go from here but again content's how we grow the space content's what we make content's what we're having fun doing and again like we'll see where it goes but i mean it, it is where the direction of the space goes and so it's like we want to breach into that next group we want to truly talk about bridging web two into web three okay well do that making fire ass content and have people start asking questions your video goes viral on friday or whenever it drops yeah it's like you, you think people aren't going to start asking questions about who this guy is and, and what he's all about what he's doing it's like yeah that's the name of the game you make a video that has nothing to do with crypto it goes stupid viral next thing you know people start going well who is this guy i need to learn more so exactly content yeah. we're making a viral video in new york too we got to. We'll figure it out. We're locking we gotta in. We, yeah, we got to figure that out. We're locking in. Yep. Um, we got too much too much energy and effort and resources in one place to not make some shit pop. We got to figure something out. 100%. Um, uh, you know, I think one of the other things that's interesting right now is, is uh, you know, once we get past NFT New York and stuff like that, we had a conversation last night where we started talking about SPL 404s and kind of how that could kind of change the direction of where the NFT space is going and kind of bring in some of the elements of, of meme coin culture that we're a fan of, and then also bring in the NFTs. So, I mean, Sonny, what are your, like, what are your thoughts on all of that? The conversations you've been having with people, everything like that. Like, what do you, where do you think that's going to go? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll say, I think it's cool because I think the three of us, we, we came from very much the NFT side of things. Yep. Um, like probably like I've been investing in crypto since like prior to NFTs and just like, but, you know, tokens for long term, right? Like meme coins, I feel like I've really, really dove into way more this time around. I had like a nice little run up with Doge and, and, and this time with meme coins around was just like, yo, it was a lot of fun, right? Yeah. But I think for the first time since like being in NFTs, it's when I've, uh, I've really focused on like trading and tokens and like all these things coming up has been these past like few months, um, like probably since like summer till till now, right? Um, and even just putting money in like, you know, obviously Solana and, you know, all this airdrops and everything like that. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's cool that it's kind of, um, being in this space has opened up, um, I don't know my own mind to just like DeFi tokens, meme coins, and just like how that ecosystem works. And so going to SPL 404 is like in ETH Denver, well, actually just prior to ETH Denver, there was a project that minted called Mutant Mon. And they are like the first standard. They set the standard of SPL 404s. And I'm not going to lie. Someone shared it to me. And like, I was like trying to read the white paper. And I was like, I don't know. This shit's like confusing. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But like kind of blindly aped a little bit. Like saw like a few excerpts. And I was like, all right, this makes sense. But I saw it kind of just running. And honestly, it was one of the most recent NFT mints that I can think of. That like, bro, they had 10,000 supply, 0.5 sold, and they sold out within like 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, they crushed. Like, bro, when is the last time you heard that happen? 
You know what I'm saying? And they like ran up a little bit. You got a cool, like if people wanted to trade all that sort of stuff, profit, and, you know, there's still, I think the ecosystem itself is still like, you have to be like one extra layer deep to really like understand what they're trying to do with like their process of reveal and hatching and everything. But the whole concept of it is really just like you have an NFT and you have a token and that NFT will always be worth X amount of the token. So it's like that one, let's say the mutant mon is worth 10,000 mutant and you can always trade that NFT for 10,000 mutant coins. Then if you want to get the NFT back, you spend 10,250, you get that slide 250 tax, but then you re-roll for your mutant mon so you could potentially get like a rare or you could potentially get like a, you know, like a really, really like crazy one in the collection. And maybe that's how you like, okay, 10 X, maybe now that floor on that NFT is higher or, or whatever the case is. But that's essentially like the whole concept of SPL four fours is having NFTs tied in with uh, tokens on the back end. Um, and those kind of like just playing a, playing a role within that specific ecosystem for the NFT. So can the token go up in price? but the floor price stay the same on the NFT? Like, that's the part I'm confused about. So, like, are they always equivalent to each other? So, if the token... Because the token... Within the ecosystem, it's all right, it's always um, equivalent to each other. As far as, like, what the market decides, I think that'd be one thing that I'd have to do a little bit more research on is, like, would it stay the same? Like, would floor price of the NFT be the same as, like if you were to buy 10,000 tokens, yeah. I don't know if that necessarily has to say the same or if like the market decides that you there would be I mean? arbitrage. Yeah. Like you would for sure be able to take advantage of that at certain times. Like it would be close, but there's definitely arbitrage opportunity with that. But also just the aspect of being able to like re-roll your NFT, right? Like imagine like, I don't know, you do it with a D God and someone has like a floor D God, they put it in for X amount of dust and then, you know, then they paid the little tax on top of it and then out comes a mythic D God. Now your floor price for that mythic D God is way more than whatever your whatever your uh like floor D God was, right? Yeah. Um I think and that's just kind of one way where it's like it could work. Um but even on the back end for like the tokens, it's like, what if those tokens get listed? You know what I'm saying? Then it's kinda like you have this NFT that's backed that's backing token listing on dexes on you know centralized yeah. exchanges whatever shout out to cube we could have some hybrid go. nfts there on you there go. you know there what i'm go. saying i know what i know they're tapped in they're tapped in they're seeing what's going on yeah um but, but yeah like you know so and it could kind of go both ways right so I, I don't know i think there's a i think there's a lot of fun things that could be done and i'm actually look like really really looking forward to when uh um you have like really really quality art behind um behind the tokens and like that's that's the arbitrage there you know what i mean do we think because like it's interesting right and like i have to do my like my own research and like because i can like visualize what you're saying but i have to actually like be hands 100 percent. but do we think it's something that like lasts like is it something that could like oh yeah potentially change and stuff because like i think it could because it's like x nfts like shout out to x nfts i think they were like a cool thing but like what, whatever happened like can, this, will, will it be the same with these hybrid nfts this is where i think it could change when you look at like bonk for example has done incredibly well over the last year right yeah but if you look at they had the bonks nfts which had a crazy pump for like a week and then completely died right was that their team though it was an adjacent. That was like a, yeah, that we'll was like a it, community type thing, right? Yeah, we'll call it semi-adjacent, okay. we'll call it. But the but there was no, the Bonk NFT did not equal anything of the token. There was no true correlation there outside of like similar art style, right? But there's no correlation there. Now, if the Bonk's NFTs were wrapped Bonk, basically, right? Where you could yeah. essentially at any one point in time redeem that Bonk NFT for Bonk, then the price of the NFTs would have gone you think completely it would have been better. Well, yeah, it would have gone okay, up yeah. with the price of Bonk. So those NFTs right now would be worth a shit ton. So what I think about is like if you think about Dog with Fat, you think about Bonk, you think about Mog, Pepe, some of these others, even on ETH, like if there's a way to make wrapped NFTs of those tokens where basically if you have, let's say, you know, four thousand dollars worth of of mog token then you get you know an nft alongside that like and at any one point in time you can unwrap it basically and get your tokens back 
then again, it's going to go up or down with the correlation of the token price. And so I think what that does, it allows for, if you have a community, again, you, you know, I used an, an ETH, NF, or, uh, ETH uh, meme coin example there, but like if you have if you have WIF right now, there's no real easy way to show your allegiance to WIF outside of like adding the hat to your PFP or whatever, right? But if you actually had an NFT that was correlated for like, I don't know, if you have 10,000 WIF, you can wrap that for an NFT. Well, now all of a sudden you have the ability again to rock the PFP for WIF. And at the same time, if at any one point in time you want to redeem that back for the WIF and, you know, sell that, do whatever you want to do, you can do that. Or you could take the NFT at that point, sell it on a marketplace, whatever, and somebody else could either rock that NFT or unwrap it, have the tokens and sell those tokens or do whatever with those. So yeah. there's just, it, I guess it just gives you more. It might, it might even open up to more like liquidity a little bit, right? Yeah. Because there might be some people that only want to trade the token and there might be some people that only want to trade the NFT and like the art side of it. Um, and then you might have people that are actively trading both and figuring out what that arbitrage is and where there's potentially top, like aspects to make something off of it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think it's like it's really interesting. And um, I'm hearing that there could be like a couple mints coming up that are focused on like spl 404s and being that hybrid and the thing is is like you can do it with current tokens right so it's like imagine if like a a, a project was coming out and i don't know let's say they like wrapped with when token or something like that um and it was like when was the token that it can be redeemed for that nft and it's like when already has like a culture value behind it you know what i mean um and that partnership could be kind of crazy uh and so yeah i I think it's kind of wild because it's like you can do it with what's already currently out but we're also going to probably see like a new wave of just you know even new projects coming up right like i i like i had put this out the other day i think it could be like a potential of like the next like meme coin where it's like meme coins turn into these like hybrid nfts we've kind of already seen it a little bit with um like you mentioned mog for example you mentioned whiff like they're doing like the traits and like people rep the pit vipers on their pfps to show their affiliation yeah. to mog right but it's uh you know not to bring slurf back up but we've seen a lot of slurf art come out recently like i got my pfp slurfed it was kind of fire I'm not gonna lie uh but we've seen i've seen a lot of just like art coming out from that community people rocking it as pfps and it's like what if slurf was wrapped into those pfps and people are actually like building around this whole like character of this sloth and everything like that like bro we've we've seen the times where like that shit goes crazy you know what i'm saying and so now wrapping it with tokens yeah i mean anything that enables more freedom with like your assets is cool like it's like it's like a new ball game kind of so i don't know i i'm learning about this like kind of for the first time between you guys right now because i was also like interested and i remember i was uh because i want to do i want to figure out a way that i can bring the uh, rest of my selfies to like Solana. And I was like trying to come up with like a cool way that wasn't just a free airdrop like I did with the first like 365. And so like I remember a couple people were telling me about that, like this, what we just talked about. The idea of having a Jakey token scares me way too much. So, but the fact that you could tie it to like something that's not my token is dope. Yeah. I mean, I think like when you think about it, what's your favorite meme right now? Just get yeah. them on the phone. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, you know, when I when I think about it, I look at like what free lunch capital has done with flooring protocol. And it's like that's a very similar thing of basically allowing you to have the opportunity to get, you know, um, access to a certain community without owning the NFT. Right. So if you're like, hey, I can't afford to buy D God or I can't afford to buy a pudgy or whatever, I can have basically a fractionalized portion of a D God or a pudgy yeah. and I can kind of um, you know, if the, if the floor price of pudgies and D gods goes up, then okay, my U tokens are going to go up and I'm going to make money off that. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the things about meme coins that we're seeing that is a cool part of it is like somebody who ha- is a whale in a meme coin can also be vibing with somebody who has 50 bucks of that token. And they, they both are on the same team essentially. Right. We just don't have that ability currently in NFTs. If you're a mad lad holder, that's great. It, you know, that's awesome, whatever. But if somebody wants to buy or wants to, you know, be a part of the Mad Lads community, you don't have that ability unless you have the money to buy a Mad Lad, right? So this would allow, again, for there to be 
I guess with meme coins and things like that, you have the ability to have smaller holders have, you know, still access to that meme coin. You have the ability for some people to, again, wrap those into NFTs and to be able to, to rock that. And again, anytime they want to unwrap it, they can do that. Um, and so I think what it does, just again, it, it gives more people accessibility to communities. And I think that's the cool part about it because we've just never really seen like meme coin communities. Now we have them. Now they're incredibly strong. And so culture coins. Yeah. And so I think that that's, this just allows more creativity with that, where people take it, you know, I mean, that that's, if there's anything that makes you bullish on this space, it's, it's this kind of stuff. Because again, it's like, I, I think all of this is a, is a culmination of so many different things. Free Lunch Capital comes out with Foreign Protocol. Now, like, and that's on ETH, right? Then uh, ETH meme coins take off, everything like that. Boom, Solana meme coins start to take off. Boom, now we're looking at SPL 404s. Now, then we have things like Mutamon and all of that. And it's like, all of them are so correlated. And it's like one person taking, hey, that's a great idea. What if we do this on top of yep. it? Cool, that's a great idea. What about doing this on top of it? It's like, that's how we grow the space. Everybody should be bullish on it. I don't care if you're on ETH, Soul, whatever you're on. Like, you should be bullish on this sort of stuff because it's innovation and that's what's going to grow this space yeah and i mean they do have it on eth and even on avax i think where there's like hybrid nfts are are coming up so um i think it's definitely going to be a, a a next wave type of thing um and it's going to be interest, interesting to see how it affects the market uh but yeah from existing tokens new tokens all that sort of shit i think there's a lot of excitement coming with that exciting times ahead exciting yeah, times know. ahead boys is this where we wrap it up we're about an hour and 15 in Jackie, what are you excited about this year for yourself, for Web3, anything? I think we honestly talked about everything that I'm kind of excited about. Like in terms of like content, like that's just, I just want to do that all day, like every day. Right. And uh, seeing the tide shift in Web3, it, it's exciting to know that thoughts that I had uh, a year ago or even like two years ago kind of. Bro. are now like making sense and that it's like okay so i wasn't real. wrong yeah you know like I, I was like so preaching real. things last year that i'm seeing come true now whether or not people seen those things that i preach doesn't matter i know to myself now that i wasn't wrong about certain things and it feels good to be right sometimes no, so that's, that's why i'm excited fact. to be proven right more i love that that's a bar i fucking love that oh shit. i know I, that's about that's, I you just that. summed up sonny in a nutshell sonny just got that let's do it energy. sonny bro <laughs> That shit just gave me energy. I'm not gonna lie, because that shit spoke to my soul. I swear, Sonny got that LeBron energy at all times. He just, he's bro, just, honestly, I, love I it. like the the instant thing that I thought of, and like you're gonna be there next week, bro. Jakey came out the first time I met Jakey. He came out to the basketball event that I threw last year during NFTLA, yep. and obviously this year NFTLA is. <laughs> Anyways, so last year during NFTLA. Through that basketball event, he came out. We linked up, um, played dodgeball even, and, like, all this sort of shit. That was the first time that I threw any sort of basketball event within Web3 and, like, tried to figure out if there was a market for it or not, right? Two weeks later, end up taking over a park, NFT NYC, like, had, a, like, 100, 150 DGens out yeah, there. We were just lot. hooping. Like, we took over two courts in NYC. Next week, bro, we are in a gym with, like, damn near 500 capacity, 14 teams from people in the space d gods pudgy layer zero magic eden okay bears who like whoever you want to think of right like they all got teams custom jerseys and like it's like at a different level now and it's like oh word like came you were a long right. way yeah. like i knew that there was going to be this there, i, I knew that. there was going to be this crossover and and now seeing it like put, come to life next week is it's going to be sick another and you're going to be there i know you're going to be there because i got there. a jersey for you hell yeah dude i'm so. excited I don't think I'll hoop though. We've been practicing the jump shot. We'll 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 keep getting yeah, it right. We, we yeah, we gotta yeah. get in the gym because yeah, I yeah. need to get proper, dude. We got to do a stunt or something over there. You wasn't yeah. with me when I was I like shooting that. in the gym. <laughs> that's facts though. <laughs> that's facts though. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm just like, bro. That's it's it's true. Like shit that people have just been cooking up for the past year. Like that's the stuff that's gonna come come to life. Yeah. Um, this year, even you with your fucking podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mark is going into an era where, like, podcasting this year is going to be, like, more fruitful than ever for you. Well, hey, I mean, no, and, and it's been, I'll give Sonny his, his kudos here, too. It's like, I've watched, I met Sonny in New York, uh, whatever that was, like, June 2022. And yeah. I remember just being like, that dude is 
first off, hammered, but also he is so big that if he falls, he might squish my ass. So I got to be careful as I'm next to him because this might be a situation where I, he's you know squishing my ass. But um, but we became buddies there, and it was like we met in New York. Hadn't even met in L.A., even though we both lived near each other. And uh, and we've become such good friends. And I've also been able to watch Sonny come into his own of going from like kind of a behind the scenes character to now he's doing all these different things. It's like, yeah, you know, I, I I RSVP'd for an event the other day and he was like, oh, yeah, that's my event. And I was like, I didn't even fucking know that's your event. Like, can you approve me? Like, I mean, that's gangster. And, yeah. And it's like it's been cool to watch him come into his own. Same thing with you. It's like watching watching the content that you've done and then seeing like. You know, when I met you last year at NFT LA, it's like I didn't really even know everything you had done outside of all of this. All of a sudden I start seeing like, oh, yeah, like here's this, you know, meme video or uh, mime video. Here's him taking a, a scooter to the fucking shin like a champ. Like I'm watching all of this stuff. Oh, my God. And I'm like, this this dude is electric, like crazy, crazy energy. And again, it's like it's it's fun to see all of us coming into our own, continuing to show our personalities, allowing like that to keep coming out there, not being afraid to just fucking make content, see how it goes. I mean, again, like if you told me back in December when Sonny first hit me up about the idea of doing this podcast, if you told me we'd be doing what we're doing now, like no yeah. shot, I would have thought that. But again, it's like Sonny busted his ass with that. We've had a lot of fun with it. I think the content that's come out of it has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Now having the ability to have on people like you and just shoot the shit about whatever's going on in the space is a lot of fun. And again, nice. I think it's a way to add more personality to the space. I think we're doing that. I think we're all doing that individually on our own. And then it's fun coming together and doing our thing. And uh, yeah, we got some fun, fun times ahead. So New York's about to be a fucking movie. Movie. Fuck Bro, yeah. I've watched Jakey jump off of that like rail into yeah. the fucking cans at walmart or whatever store that was i've watched that video so many times hurts me every time and yeah honestly like i feel like it, it like i feel it in my hip low-key i honestly think like that's one yeah. of those clips that i'm most proud of <laughs> like it sounds funny but like i think that's one of the ones where i'm I like mean, dude i don't know how i could like recreate it i it, couldn't it was dope know? but to see it go from that to we've talked about this um as well as just like the jupe commercial that you did yep. fire video for ct like quality amazing creativity amazing um i'm trying to think of the other recent one the one where you like i think you'd like took your ledger your hard wallet yeah, you yeah. put it in a briefcase you drove it out went to go dig up a hole and put it in there yep. uh and i literally just saw one today with uh the meme coin with wish yeah. like hey hey you want some meme coins and you pulling up to the you pulling up to the window to see <laughs> see what's up uh and walking away wrecked like it's just like that type of like that type of creativity coming into the space and you making skits off of like the shit that's going on in like the funniest way, like seeing that progression and watching your content now, even the shit that you do with Cube, where you like leveled up your life, like, bro, yeah. it's, it's been so dope to watch, man. It's been so dope. So just want to give you your flowers because it's, you, it's been fire. And Mark, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No, it's been fun, dude. I think like. It's been like trial and error to see what kind of works. And honestly, this like commercial style and like we talked about it on the podcast that you and I. Oh, wait, can I say that on here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the podcast that you and I did. But it's like uh, I was trying to find things that like resonated well. Right. Because it was it was tough. Like I, I did the Web 2 stuff and like a lot of it was like crazy, but it didn't feel like it fit super heavily in Web 3. And so it's like, OK, well, let's take like the comedic aspect. But like, how do we actually bring value to the thing that we're talking about? And that's where the kind of commercial stuff came up, like kind of came to fruition, right? And it's been a lot of fun. Like I think I found a new, like I'm passionate about all types of content, right? Like entertainment at its core is like what I love to do and what I want to do for a living. But I think like the production value, like it could be as simple as like audio and stuff like that is like uh, something that I didn't really think about before. I thought if the content or the thing that I was doing was crazy enough, then that's good. But now I found like a new respect for what goes into production and that's all Colton, like in terms of editing, equipment, all of that. But um, I've become more hyper focused on that. And so, yeah, I love it's it. been really cool. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just like you're living in a lane of your own in this space. And I think that's that's incredible. And it's like only you could do it, honestly, like literally only Jakey could do it. And that's the most fire part about it. Man, we all just did a ten minutes of sucking each other off. That's that's good. You need that every now and then with your homies. Three guys, one podcast. You feel me? <laughs>
<laughs> Damn, why can't why can't you just like give your homie some compliments without it having to turn turn left like this? You know, you got to back up. This camera's like, gonna cut oh, you up. Um, why, why's it gotta be like that? I'm just you like know. no. I, I, I just want to get flowers. Like this is just this is the homie. This yeah, is my no, guy. No, I love it. That's I love all. it. I love it. All right, we got to wrap this. Mark's a little jealous. Oh I think that's my all god, it is. we got it. That's all it is. <laughs> On a real note, we do have to wrap this up because this is like yeah. an hour and a half. We're deep in. So, Let's get um, it. hey, three guys, one podcast. That's a wrap. I D weekly, D weekly. It's always oh, sunny in Markville. Shout out to, to Cubic, Cubic Exchange, gang, gang. Go buy some. Uh, go buy some tokens. NFA. I didn't tell. Nah, what complete tokens. FA. Oh, true, 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 true. I didn't tell him what true. tokens. I said just go buy some tokens. True. That's buy it. tokens. Yeah, and buy tokens. Any tokens. All the tokens. All of them. All. Every it single up, one. <laughs> yeah, is that considered financial advice if you tell somebody to buy everything? <laughs> oh, I'll say it with my chest, dude. <laughs> buy every single token on Solana right now. Make sure you're using Cube Exchange. Total financial advice. You can help. You can hold me liable. I don't know if you have to deal with that. You're in. Ca- he's in Canada. Oh, I don't dude, know. They'll never I, find me, yeah. bro. They yeah. won't find he's me. He's in the woods. They'll it, never and he's find de- me. You've definitely got your shit like booby trapped. Like I can not, see. It. They're not getting to me. Don't worry. I'm not worried. Yeah. So with That's that, funny as fuck. We got wish combing his eyebrows. <laughs> Hey yo, uh, wish he's been doing wish, that the whole time, dude. Wish be fly as fuck. Let me it's just true. tell you, wish is fly as fuck all the time. When I seen the way he pulled up as a security with that jacket with the skull on dude. the back and bro and the loafers, man, my guy just my guy. Dude, be I'm fresh. not kidding. We've gone my to like be real fresh. Dude, we've gone to like I don't know. I, I want to say like three parties since I've been out to LA. And I've let Steven Wish dress me for each one of those. And I've never gotten so many compliments about my clothes. I don't think I've, anybody has ever compl- complimented me on like my style or my fashion. But then I go to those parties after letting Steven Wish dress me. Yo, and dude, if, the if, pitches loved it, bro. If we get fashion Jakey to go Ooh. with soul Jakey, bro, you're going to be a real That's killer. That's a heavy combination. Yeah. You're going to be a real killer. I mean, he are, does, y'all, are y'all styling him in New York? Fuck, I'm down. Yeah. yeah, he does yeah. have on his legs sex icon tattooed on there. So yeah, I, bro, that's conviction. So, I got it on purpose. Yeah, conviction. so I mean, it, you manifest it, bro. Yeah. With that, we do have to wrap this up because yeah, this is an hour and a half episode. We got to get this out tomorrow. So I bet. Um, let's get a tattoo in New York. Let's do it, dude. Bet. You don't. Have to okay, I'll, I'll tattoo you, boys. There we go. Okay, there no, we go. no, no, no. I'm not letting <laughs> Mark come close to my body. No. <laughs> pause. <laughs> pause. Not even a pause. There was no pause. True, there. true, true, true. <laughs> All right, guys, that's an episode of Three Guys, One Podcast. Uh, Anywho, (laughs) we'll talk to y'all later. Cube Exchange, buy all the tokens.